Chondrites are a group of jawed fishes with a cartilaginous skeleton, which means they have no bones. Sharks, rays, skates, and chimeras are among the diverse group of fishes that make up this classification. The majority of them are marine fishes. The other group is comprised of bony fishes, which are classified as members of the class Ossicthes. The Chondrichthys are largely carnivores at the top of a food chain. Among the organisms that they consume include a wide range of fish, squid, and marine mammals in addition to mollusks, cetaceans, and planktonic organisms. The Chondrichthys clay dates back over 360 million years. Their cartilaginous skeleton appears to be secondarily evolved from bony predecessors indicating that they are vertebrates with important derived characteristics. Their cartilaginous skeleton helps them sink less in water. The chondrites have around a thousand species. They are more common than hagfish or lampreys, yet some are rare. Although mostly marine, there are 28 documented freshwater species and some marine forms may migrate to freshwater. Their bodies are fusiform or dorsal ventrally depressed. A few males have claspers on their pelvic fins, and most species have unique placoid scales, except for the chimeras. They employ internal fertilization and develop directly, unlike the hagfish and lamprey, which have larvae. Despite deriving from ancestor with well-developed bone, chondrichthys have no bony features in their skeleton. They have teeth, scales, and spines, but from mineralized tissues. Some members of this group are legendary, like this great white shark, while the others are not matters of public interest. Chondrites are arranged in a hierarchy of classification. There are classes of fishes that are included in a division of Nathostomida, due to the fact that they have jaws on them. Nathostomida is a division of the class Vertebrata that includes all vertebrates with jaws. Nathostomida is separated into superclasses, namely Pisces, which have fins, and Tetrapoda, which have bare limbs. Pisces is divided into two classes, Conjectes and Osicthes. Conjectes is then subdivided into two subclasses, Elasmobranchii, which includes sharks, rays, skates, and softfishes, and Holocephaly, which includes chimeras, also known as ghost sharks. The elasmobranchi is derived from the word elasmo means metal plate and branchi means gills. The subclass contains by far the greatest number of species. It includes the sharks, skates, and ray. For example, from the previous reporter, the dogfish is widely distributed shark, generally no more than 1 meter in length and commonly used in biology classes for dissection. They are often viewed as nuisance by fishermen because they take bait intended for other species. In contrast to dogfish, some elasmobranchs grow to 12 meters. Pterocircal caudal fin. Sharks have fuzziform body. They have asymmetrical heterocircal caudal fin, paired pectoral, and pelvic fins. Heterocircal means other tail. The example in this slide shows the heterocircal caudal fin of a tiger shark. The picture shows the modified anal fin of a male tiger shark forming a cigar-shaped structure which called clasper. Clasper are involved in the transfer of sperm from male uh, tiger shark to a female. Fins of sharks, other type of fin shown in this slide. We have an example of a fin of a leopard shark. They are narrowly distributed in the eastern Pacific. In some of those areas, large numbers gather during summer months for some reasons that are not currently clear. Sharks and ray gill slits Most sharks have five gill slits. They also have developed sensory receptors including olfactory, mechanoreceptors, light receptors, and electroreceptors. In this slide, we have an example of a gill slit of a sandbar shark and a Pacific black tip reef shark. The sandbar and black tip shark are widely distributed species, with the black tip often inhabiting shallow areas including the intertidal. The gill slit on the boat sharks are located in the lateral portion of the body, while the stingray gill slits are located in the pale ventral surface on either side of the, of the body mid lane. In addition, these rays have another pair of gill slits 
spiracles on the dorsal surface posterior to their eyes. Next, we have the sensory receptors of a shark. We have here the lateral line of a leopard shark, Triakisimi fasciatum, is visible. The dogfish lateral line is shown in the close-up view. The eye of a sand tiger shark or Carcharias taurus. This is a close-up of a electroreceptor um, pulley of lar larenzini of a dogfish and its olfactory nostrils. Shark and ray feet. Sharks are also armed with impressive supply of teeth, including rows of functional teeth followed by rows of developing teeth. In picture A is the teeth of a sand tiger shark. From the angle, it can be seen as they are across the jawline. Teeth will be lost and those behind will replace those lost. In picture B are rows of teeth seeing preserved of jaw, jaw of the shark. This view of the inside jaw, the rows of the teeth move up and over the jawline at the top of the photograph. From the inside of the mouth, looking forward the anterior end of the shark, the teeth can be seen as they move up and out. The lower jaw is seen from the bottom of the photograph. From the previous slides, although all organ systems present and well developed, sharks do not have an organ dedicated to buoyancy, maintenance equivalent to swim bladder of bony fish. But they do accumulate oil in the liver, which aid in buoyancy, although most species still must move to avoid sinking. Natural selection favored a return of cartilaginous skeleton in the freshwater. Bony fish ancestor of Chuntridites. Water salt regulation results a blood within the water content similar to the seawater, although some species maintain blood with higher salt content than seawater. This accomplished by maintaining high concentration of urea and trimethylene oxide in the blood, which is a nitrogen compound where nitrogen content derived to removing the amino acid contained by dietary protein. Shark eggs Although all members of GLOD use internal fertilization, strategies for offspring support are highly variable. All skate and some sharks lay eggs after fertilization and area of oviporius. Uh, ovi means egg parties giving birth to, including those that lay a mermaid purse. They have a direct development and some species take up to two years to grow into an adult, the longest the direct development time of any vertebrae. Some sharks return their young within their uterus, where yolks provide a source of food development. This term, ovo vv parius, Ovo means egg, vivi means alive, parium means giving birth to. This is all no, also known as a placental viviparity. Other gives nourishment to their developing embryo through placenta, a secretion called uterine milk. This is these are called viviparius means vivi means alive, parius means giving birth. So moving forward. Next is sensory receptor of sharks. Sharks have the same senses as humans smell, sight, taste, hearing, and touch. They have also developed extra sensory organs that are specific to their underwater environment. First is we do have electroreception or ampullae of Lorenzini. Sharks have a complex electrosensory system enabled by receptors covering the head and snout area. These receptors sit in jolly filled sensory organs called the ampullae of Lorenzini. These tiny pores are extremely sensitive and can detect even the faintest of electrical fields, such as those generated by the Earth's geomagnetic field or muscle contractions in prey. Next is we do have a pressure changes or lateral line. The lateral line is responsible for alerting a shark to potential prey and predators. It's made up of a rows of small pores that run all the way from the snout to the tail, surrounding water flows through this through these pores and special sensory cells sense any pressure changes. 
Next is shark eggs. We have oviparity, ovoviviparity, and viviparity. First is oviparity. Skate, chimera, and some shark species produce eggs encased in a tough leathery egg case. A female may spend a long time laying her eggs, ensuring they are secretly, securely fixed in a safe place and can take between six to nine months before they are ready to hatch. Next is ovoviviparity. Instead of laying her eggs, the female will carry them inside her body, providing extra safety from potential predators. The embryo is developed within an egg case that has a thin membrane. Once developed, the baby shark will hatch inside her mother, who will then give birth to the young. In some species, the pups aren't born immediately after hatching. Instead, they stay in the uterus where they fill off and fertilize eggs. This is known as oophagy. Lastly is we have viviparity or life birth. Viviparity is the most advanced method of reproduction. The baby shark develops inside their mother's body, receiving nutrients and oxygen through an umbilical cord. This is the same methods used by mammals. But unlike mammals, when the pups are born, they are immediately independent and have to fend for the cell. Ray body form. Ray, any of the cartilaginous fishes of the order Batoidae related to sharks and placed with them in the class Conjectes. The order includes 534 species. Rays are distinguished from sharks by a flattened, disc like body with the five gill openings in the mouth generally located on the underside. Rays are further distinguished from sharks by their greatly enlarged wing-like pectoral fins, which extend forward along the sides of the head above the gill openings. Many rays swim and breathe differently from sharks, propelling themselves with their pectoral fins and taking in water for respiration through large openings on the upper surface of the head, rather than through the mouth. The ray's, the ray's tail is generally long and slender and in many species bears one or more sharp, saw-edged venomous spines that can be used to inflict painful wounds. Rays can, be, rays can be classified into electric rays, saw fishes, skates, and various families of rays that have slender whip-like tails equipped with spines and that are all inclusively called seeing rays or whip-tailed rays. Lastly is we have manta ray or milio body forms. The manta ray or manta birostris is a pelagic filter feeder and is the largest ray species. Found in tropical waters, manta rays may grow to 1300 kilograms and over 7.5 meters. Hello, I'm here to Hello, I'm here to give my report about the holocephali. So, holocephali, most commonly known as chimera or ghost shark, are a type of cartilaginous fish from the class chondrites and are closely related to sharks and rays. And just like their relatives, the chimera have a cartilaginous skeleton and possess an external reproductive organ found in their pelvic fin called clusters. However, unlike sharks and rays, they have a single gill opening like most bone fish have, and they also lack scales. The species are placed in three families, the Chimeridae, the Kalorinkidae, and the Rhinochimeridae. While some chimera live in coastal waters, many chimeras live in deep cold waters from depths reaching 2,500 meters or 8,200 feet. Chimeras can be found in temperate to cold waters of all oceans. Characteristics So, chimeras have a large pectoral and pelvic fins. Their tail are slender and are not suited for swimming. Instead, they use their pectoral fins for locomotion, similar to how rays move. Their big eyes allow them to sleep better and prey, and their dorsal spine acts as a barb for defense against predators. And like all fish, Chimera possess a lateral line to help them find prey and avoid predators. They also possess an organ called Ampullae of Lorenzini. Like their shark relatives, this helps them sense electric fields of any animal which is helpful in finding prey. So, as I've said, there are three families of chimeras. 
and the first one that I'm going to explain here today is about TV Camera Day and they are known for having a rounded, short, or conical snout size can be reached about to 1.5 meters or 5 feet and they can be found in warm, temperate, and boreal latitudes of all oceans the second one is Kalo Frankie Day and they have a whole shape of both keys and their size is about 1.3 meters and are restricted to cool temperate and boreal latitudes of southern hemisphere generally taken in rather shallow water sometimes entering estuaries and rivers and the third one is which is the rhino camera day rhino camera day have a long snout their lateral line can be found in an open blue and they can reach the size about 1.3 meters or 4 feet they can be found in depths of 685 to 2000 meters so in their evolution the chimeras are thought to have emerged in the aftermath of the Devonian extinction that ended some of uh, 360 million years ago the earliest fossil specimen of camera skull can be dated to roughly 280 million years ago and has given the name Dwai Castellacos Ostuizen which was discovered during the 1980s in the Karoo region of South Africa. Upon first glance, the fossil displayed characteristics similar to a group of an unusual extinct sharks from the family Simoridae which are known for their strange dorsal spines. However, computerized tomography uh, tomography scans reveal that the specimen possess a brain case and a number of other cranial features that are more closely resembled to those of modern chimeras than those of current extinct sharks. So that's all my report for now and uh, thank you.